What's up, everybody? You here with Off the Field with Isaiah Robinson. We got a very special guest, Hampton alumni, also for the former quarterback at the Real HU, Jalen Williamson. So today's episode is going to be sponsored by Off the Field Financial Services. When it comes to life, things are going to happen and most people are not prepared. At Off the Field Financial Services, we are helping families build a legacy. Our motto is to stay ready. We always looking for agents. So if you like helping people and like making money, hit us up at offthefield.com. What's up, everybody? It's Off the Field. I got special guest, Hampton alumni, also former quarterback, the one and only Jalen Williamson. How you doing? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for inviting me, man. I appreciate nah, you. Thanks for coming out. Really appreciate you. You recently just graduated. Talk to me about your story. How did you end up in the NFL front office? Uh, just for me, um, I graduated and got my bachelor's in 2016 from Hampton University in sports management. Got my, um, my, my, my master's in sports administration in 2018. Um, so I'm a few years out from, uh, from school and um, my, my, my path was a little different. Uh, I had actually interned with assistant athletic director um, at Hampton University and um, in terms and in operations. As once I finished my my master's, I was kind of like not sure exactly where I want to go. I feel like a lot of a lot of students like that as far as as far as playing sports. You know, you always had a dream of wanting to go to the NFL, wanting to mm-hmm. put as much work in as possible. I wish just looking back now, I wish I prepared myself a little bit more for life after sports. But um, yeah. uh, but uh, I actually um transition is tries tries trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to coach, didn't know if I wanted to uh, be in operations, didn't know if I wanted to you know exactly what area I want to go in. So I kind of did it all. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I did it all. I kind of um in the short span of time, I did an operations intern um at Hampton University. Um I actually um, moved on from there and actually coached at Austin Smith High School high school over there at Chesapeake. That was my um where I graduated from mm-hmm. uh, coached quarterbacks there. And then uh, at the same time, I was coaching quarterbacks at Austin Smith. I was actually um, working at the MEAC um, at the Mid East Athletic Conference um, at Championships and Compliance Department as an intern. So I I did a little, you know, as far as the office work for the Championships Compliance, did the coaching, did the operations. So I was trying to figure out what exactly area I want to go in. And I stumbled upon the opportunity with the Rams mm-hmm. while working at the MEAC. And um, I guess you know, one of my supervisors, he saw something in me and was like, hey, you know, we don't the opportunity to come in here and try to make the impact. So mm-hmm. trying to do as much as I can, man, to team to grow, to team to progress, man. I'm just thankful. And like I said, to be in this position I am right now, and it's a blessing for sure. Right. So you're talking about interning. That's what I'm actually doing right now. I'm, they actually got a class at Hampton, a 12 credit class. So I'm actually coaching quarterbacks at a school called St. Francis. They're yeah. like the number one school over in the East Coast. So. Yeah, I'm familiar with St. Francis. Okay, okay. I mean, I think Smith is. Smith, my, I think Smith is the top school in the East Coast, <laughs> man. But yeah, St. Francis is pretty good, though. St. Mm-hmm. Francis, don't mess with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, St. Francis is nice. So you coach quarterbacks there? Yeah, but I coach quarterback. Nice, man. How you like it? How you like it? I like it. So I, it's a different It's a different feel from playing the game and actually coaching the game. But mm-hmm. I definitely like coaching and just watching the players progress and them taking into what you're saying and then doing it on the field. So yeah, exactly. I really like that. Exactly, man. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. And and you have an aspect of playing a game too as well. You have a different, um, you bring a different, you know, per, not only personality, but a different aspect to, mm-hmm. you know, to the guys as well, man. And that's huge, you know, as far as this, you know, so there's a lot of coaches out there that never played, never really, you know, they, they don't have to tell you but so much, but you have a plan of game, you understand, bring a different dynamic, man. That's huge for sure. I'm glad you like that, though. That's, 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 that's dope, man. Thank you. So tell the audience what you actually do for the L.A. Rams. Uh, I worked in the player engagement department. So right now I'm a fellow right now with the player engagement department. I work with the um, – uh, as far as with different programs, different things we actually install with all of the players. I work with all of the players and alongside different departments as well. And um, basically liaison too as well with the NFL PA. I'm going to be honest with you, we do a lot of different things in my department, man. And um, open up my eyes to so much that goes, you know, that's involved within the um, uh, department as far as with the NFL, the organization. It takes a lot to run it, man. And there's so much, so much opportunity out there for, for young 
young people, you know, coming up, man, I wasn't aware of it until I actually got into it. And I was like, wow, you know, I work with the marketing department, work with the uh, community relations, communications, um, uh, media relations, uh, it, the list goes on, you know, it, it's so many different aspects of the organization. And uh, they basically, you know, you have to be a liaison to the players and um, basically set them up for success um, on and off the field. So mm -hmm. I kind of assist with that, you know, on a daily basis. So it's, it's cool, though, man. I like it. I like it a lot. So, yeah, so it's a whole new world to you. So what what is the biggest adjustment you see from the rookies coming in that they need to make to have success in the NFL? Uh, the thing is, though, I don't think I would say, because that's, that's I, I was kind of like tasked with one of the um, – the things I had to do this year was basically the rookie class. I was kind of like basically um, uh, over just overseeing that everyone make sure they're okay, make sure everything's good to go as far as housing on and off the field, uh, financial wise, set them up financial advice, different things such as that. And um, one thing I would say as far as with the rookies, man, um, we had a great group of guys that was prepared from Cam Makers to Van Jefferson to um, you know to Eric Baines to you know guys to come from more so smaller schools as well, man. And um, and uh, they was very prepared, very uh, professional, and um, and everyone seemed to embrace. You know, it was a weird off season with the pandemic, mm -hmm. so everyone was it, it, it was tough as far as just the transition from college and NFL for everyone. But um, uh, I would say, as far as um, I would I would think it it's just adjusted to professional um, environment and being a professional in general um, on and off the field and daily, man. Um, Along, go along with finances. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your finances, because you, you go from, you know, college, you know, because not really having but so much, and then you get right. these, these amount of, of game chats and this money, the abundance of money coming in. Got to be able to know how to take care of it. So the, the two things I would say is just the finances and make sure and just seeing how to you know develop as a professional um, on and off the field. So, mm -hmm. but like I said, we had a great group of guys that was already ready to go. That was already um, mentally. Um, ready as far as with the, the preparation of, of being a professional and um, it wasn't too much for you know for us our standpoint that we had to insert but um, like I say we it was a blessing to come upon a, a, a great group of guys like that. Hmm. So you talk about the finances and the things like that so like as I mentioned before I just started my own finance um, yep. financial services so like for me I know a lot of people my age group really don't know about financial services so I want to ask you, like, how important is that, like, understanding financial services? It's huge. It's huge. And I, I, I can attest to that. When I was in college, I really wasn't too um, on top of it. I didn't I didn't come from a, a, a background where, you know, finances was always huge as far as talked about within the household or mm -hmm. come from a lot of uh, a wealthy background. I wasn't come from that. So I wasn't really, you know, on top of it like I should have been. But um, it's huge. It's everything, man. It's everything. It's, it's very important. Um, just to set yourself up for, for you know, not only for where you're at right now, but for your future and for, for our generational wealth too as well, man. So much things you can do right now as far as preparing yourself um, financially to make sure you're in a great, great position to provide not only for you and your family, but the people that are coming after you too as well. So um, finances is huge. Uh, I test for everyone as far as, the, I know you got a financial um uh, as far as putting putting things together, as far as finances for for, for students your age and, and your age category too as well, but I think that's everything. The earlier the better. You just start on it and start preparing for it. As far as just getting things in order, I think that's huge, man. Mm -hmm. So now we get into the questions that everybody want to know. What is the NFL looking for in players? What are looking for in players? Mm -hmm. Like if they uh, want to do somebody. What are they looking for? They would recruit somebody. Uh, one thing I would say is um, high character guys. Mm. High character. I can't give everything as far as what we look for. As far as I'm GG, like a general basis. Uh, mm. Within our scouting department, um, high character guys, man. Um, guys as, as coming in as professionals, um, but also that work and want to, you know, you know, come into the NFL and, and perform well and, and do it, you know, each and every day, and, and you don't have to. Um, 
uh, as far as be on top of them as much as possible. You know, you look for guys that's already coming in that's ready to go. Um, but I say I, I style in the department do a great job, man, as far as what they go about looking for and recruiting, as far as looking for guys that fit our system. But one thing I would say is each team, you know, a different mm-hmm. is different within each team as far as what they're looking for to fit their system. But I know myself, we look for high character guys, the guys as, as um, professionals on and off the field. Mm. So you talk about um, high character. Like, so some people don't realize that like, things off the field could hurt your chances of going to the league because there's like, there's investigators that goes around asking other people like about you and like the chance could mark you off the board just like that without even it's you funny. knowing. And it's funny you said that because I, I remember my coach, Coach Maynard, used to always tell us um, as far as, you know, you know, scouts might come in make sure that you're, you know, that you're, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you, 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 you're displaying, you're putting out, you know, a, a great um, a representation of yourself each and every day. And um, didn't really think nothing of it. You know how you're in college, you know, you're going one ear out the other type thing. And um, and it wasn't how I really got on this level right here. And I saw it, it's serious. Mm. It's really serious, man. And as far as this is a business, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, there's a lot of money going out, a lot of money being spent on, you know, each and every day, you know, and, um, and, uh, you know, you want people to come in that, that represent the organization well, mm-hmm. and, uh, and not basically take the chance on anybody that's, that, you know, that's borderline or not really unsure as far as, you know, how they are as a person. So, mm-hmm. um, I think it's huge, man. It's very important as far as is, you know, just displaying a great representation of yourself each and every day. Right. For sure. It can definitely hurt you for sure, like you said. It can't hurt you. It can't hurt you as far as what the best there, what might happen, what might be said as far as with the training staff or, you know, uh, teachers, professors on campus, what they might say about you, or you know, you want to make sure you put in, you know, uh, a great representation of yourself, like I mentioned earlier, man. Mm. So, like you said, that you really didn't know what you wanted to do coming out of college. So, but people don't realize that there are actual opportunities in sports without you actually playing sports. So what is some advice you could give to um, athletes right now that's moving forward that wants to be in your position? Uh, one thing I would say is start preparing yourself now, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, as early as possible, get your resume, get your resume right, sign up your resume, if you know, it, and it's and one thing too as well is people on campus there to help you, mm-hmm. you know, and take advantage of it, uh, you know, as far as what, you know, people on him as far as helping with resumes, interview prepping, different workshops they might have on developing careers and take advantage of it as much as possible. Looking back on it, you know, you know, athletes. So I know the schedule is pretty hectic, mm-hmm. got a lot going on, but um, it's best to take advantage of those things that um, that's provided there for you. But try to prepare yourself as much as possible. Um, intern, internships, try to look into them. Um, reaching out, connecting with different people as much as possible, whether it's via LinkedIn, um, or, uh, you know, any, any type of, you know, network as possible, as far as, uh, expanding it, you want to continue to expand your network and seeing the growth. I'm, I'm, I say I'm in the NFL right now and I'm just team to do it right now, as far as reaching out to many people to team to expand my network and networking is huge, you know, it's very huge. But like I said, if I was, you know, just my advice is just start right now the earlier, the better, um, just make sure you're preparing yourself and, um, uh, and, and, and so when you do have an opportunity, you do have a, you know, option, option that comes up, there's something that's available, you're ready for it. You know, you don't have to hesitate, you don't have to try to prepare, you don't have to try to, you know, wait until you're graduated, try to figure things out. You kind of already know what you want to do. So um, I was just, my advice is just try to prepare yourself and exactly, you know, it, whether you don't know what you want to do, um, it's a little thing you can do that's just help within uh, just a, an environment, um, whether it's, you um, you know, preparing yourself for write, you know, documents or reports, you know, different things you might do in school, take that stuff serious, you know, because that stuff is real, it's really real once you come to the real world as far as working each and every day for organization or, or university itself within the sports industry, so. So one of my mentors used to tell me, it's not what you know, it's about who you know. So working is a big part, huh? I have, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's 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 very true, man. That's very true. Uh, uh, a lot of people qualify. A lot of people. It's it's a lot of college students that's graduating each and every year. You know, a lot of people have qualifications. A lot of people. It, it's 
networking is very huge, man. It's very important. And um, and I would say continue to expand your network as much as possible and continue to, you know, try to reach out to people and, and develop relationships. That it goes a long way. For sure, for sure. So speaking about relationships, what made you come to the real HU? Why did you come to Hampton? Oh, uh, what made me come to Hampton? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't what, I can't say what really made me try to mess with <laughs> Nah, um, Hampton, man, Hampton is everything, man. Hampton is huge for me, man. I um, I committed my junior year in high school. Oh, wow. Okay, committed. so you committed early. Yeah, I committed early, man. I, I was a rare, rare story, man. It's mm-hmm. funny because I was talking to one of the reporters from back home in uh, Virginia, and they was just talking about it the other day, you know. Um, yeah, I committed my junior year in high school. I uh, wanted to focus on uh, won the state championship my last year. Um, mm. Something that my high school hasn't done uh, since the quarterback that was before me, who I replaced, he did it with his freshman year. He ended up going to University of Alabama. Okay. I replaced him, and I ended up just, you know, shattering a lot of his records. And mm. I only had two years of football. Mm. I only played my junior and senior year in, in high school varsity. Mm-hmm. So uh, after my junior year, which I had a great year, I was, I'm committing. Right. <laughs> I'm committing, man. I, I only had one year. I put up some crazy numbers, man. I think I threw for like 40 some touchdowns, over 3,500 yards. And we went deep into the playoffs. And, um, but, uh, Hampton was the first one to really embrace me, man. And, uh, had a lot of interest from different areas. They, you know, different teams. It was like, hey, you know, different, I'm sorry, universities. Mm-hmm. It was like, hey, we want to see you, you know, um, your senior year. We want to see how your senior year go. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not waiting. I might not, you know. I, I mean, it's just, it's just that I just, I had an older brother too, man, and just my older brother Corey, man. He, he, um, was one of the top players coming. Not to say top players coming out, but he was a pretty uh prototypical size quarterback because I'm undersized. He was like six two. He was like six two two twenty. Mm-hmm. I was five nine, one sixty five in high school. Wow, I was small, and he he ended up um getting hurt and tore his, tore his ankle his senior year and all the colleges that was recruiting him backed off. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I it was a risk with it. I'm like, I'm not taking that. I didn't want to take that. So I had me with the first one to embrace me, you know, show me, you know, so much love, man. And I went on a visit there, love the coach staff, Coach Rose. I still talked talk to Coach Rose a couple of days ago. Um, he brought me in and said, you want to offer me, man, and Coach Sneed. Willie Sneed's dad um, mm-hmm. for the Ravens. His dad, he was the old office coordinator at the time. Oh, and I know that. man, they uh they brought me in and it was like, hey, you know, we you know, we we love what you can do, the assets you can bring. Mm-hmm. And uh, and like I said, it just, it just felt like at home at Hampton. Mm-hmm. I was at home. I was I was from Portsmouth, so I was right across not right. too far from it. So I was like, hey, I'm going to Hampton, you know. So and then we ended up winning state championship my last year. So it all worked out. And uh, I had the chance to focus on it. It's funny to be all of my guys, that we, my senior group, all us committed for, um, mm-hmm. early. Uh, mm-hmm. So we focus on that state championship. We know oh, what wow. it. So that was the goal for the whole team, you getting that ring. We, we, it's funny, our leaders, leadership is huge, man. Our leaders that we had on our high school team, man, mm-hmm. um, everyone followed. Mm-hmm. Everyone followed, man. And uh, me, JC, Saquon. Saquon ended up coming to Hampton with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saquon, he was a receiver there with me too as well. And, um, um, Raheem, we it was a lot of guys that we had that was leaders on the, our senior year, and uh, everyone followed. Everyone, everyone just followed, fell right in line. And it's funny how the years after the come, we had so much success. The years after, they didn't win a state championship. They haven't won a state championship since I left. Oh, wow. But they had so much success, though. So much success. I mean, a lot of state titles. I mean, state championship appearances. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, they couldn't. They had only one though. Because I actually uh, played for Avalon. I remember playing at the field. It's a nice field. Got lights all up. Got a nice little stadium. Wait, Oscar Smith? Yeah, we, uh, we, yeah, we actually skirmished Oscar Smith, but we okay. went to the okay. place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, How y'all do? Y'all win? Yeah, we won. Okay. It was, uh, we had a mob, though. It was me, uh, you know, Trayvon Diggs. Yeah. Me, yeah. Trey. Yeah. We had a mob. It, a yeah, lot of players. Play, what year y'all playing this? Who y'all playing this? We those? played against uh, Riverdale. We played against uh, the I'm saying, what, play, what players on Smith team y'all played against? You, oh, you? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to figure out what year it was. It was in 2015 and 16. 15 or 16. I'm not sure who's on that mm-hmm. team. 
Josh Sweat was on the team then. Dang, I can't believe it. I can't think that was. I don't think it was Josh Sweat or Andrew Brown year, nothing like that. It was after them. After them. Okay, yeah. So it was like twenty. Because I was in my, I was in my junior year. So it was in two thousand sixteen. It's two thousand sixteen when it happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he might have been on. It might have been a tough year for him. <laughs> That's what's up, though. That's what's up. I know y'all are pretty good, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know y'all are pretty good. That's what's yeah. up. So let's talk about the HBCU movement that's going on right now. Do you mm-hmm. think the top recruit athletes should consider HBCU? I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. You know, why not? You know, um, and, and that only thing that does is is move the you know move the culture forward, man, and, mm-hmm. and, and bring more attention to these HBCUs, man. That's that's needed. There's right. some talented athletes there already. Um, they just need more. Um, I would say recognition, man. And as far as um, you know, it's, it's it's some talented people there, man. I, I just I, I don't I don't see why why these top athletes don't sometimes. This is my personal opinion, but I understand that what comes along with those you know the big schools as far as the you know the different things on and off the field, the fun and different things that goes on with it, man. But um, I, I just in my opinion, I went to HBCU. I'm just I'm kind of biased with that. I think you should, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, Nothing like this. It. A great experience. I know you was at University of Maine. You came to Hampton. You seen the be- You seen both worlds of it. So you already can attest to it. But um, I have a lot of friends that went to the huge D one schools too, as well as far as the Tex and the you know UNCs and, and whatnot. But and it's funny because they always tell me we wish you would want HBCU. You know, and uh, <laughs> it was like man, it's nothing like the experience. They would come and visit, and they would be like, wow, like you know, mm-hmm. you know, man, it's nothing like here. The campus life and just being around in general, man, is is you can't duplicate that, you know, mm-hmm. anywhere else. So it's nothing like the HBC. But I don't see why not. And the only thing we'll do is the team to push push the culture forward, man, and bring more recognition to it. Cause mm-hmm. you know, if you're a top athlete, they don't come find you regardless. Right. No matter where you at, you know, um, the scouts don't come find you. Right. And just to speak on like the actual school life of it, like I came from Maine, so mm-hmm. I got I came there like everybody basically knew each other. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like a family. And it's just like everybody look out for each other, and it's just, it just really felt like home. Like it felt like there was some place you could grow as a person, have yeah. fun. It just yeah. was definitely a whole different vibe. Like I said, you can't duplicate that, man. It's 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 a great environment in general. It has its ups and downs, like everywhere else, though. Mm-hmm. You know, everywhere it has their ups and downs, some positives, some negatives. But um, I just feel like the positives outweigh the negatives. Just I looking back on it, I can't. I can't uh, tell you, uh, you know, I can tell you stories for days of things that we had, one, you know, <laughs> went through over there and different, different things, man. But um, it was nothing like it. The experience in general, I, I can do it all over again. It wouldn't change nothing. You know, it wouldn't change anything. The one thing that I had to uh, get, not get used to, but like understand was the Hampton run around. That's positive negatives with everything, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's some good things, it's a bad thing. That's one of the bad things for sure. Is the sure. run around is real. Uh, it, 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 it's real, man. Everyone went through it. Everybody went through it. <laughs> so what do you think needs to get needs to be done to give HBCU players a, more of a chance to get into the league? Wherever you at, just dominate it. Mm. Dominate. If you if you want to go to the NFL, you gotta dominate it each and every day. Like mm. just something I didn't you know notice while I've been here, man. Like Football is serious, like, mm-hmm. like it's serious to to these guys, man. Like, like, like Aaron Donald, like he's he's working out like right after the season, like mm-hmm. break. There's no, nah, it's serious. Like, right. you know, if you don't wanna, if you don't, if you want to go to the league, and it's crazy. I, I looking back on it now, like. Now I was coming up like, man, I just want to go to the league. I want to go to the league. I want to, to, the mm-hmm. I want to prepare myself to go to the league. Mm. Looking at the people in the league now, I'm like, I know the way I was. I was doing. I was doing the harbors. I was, nah, it mm. ain't. It ain't. It ain't. It's serious, man. Each and every day, like, like it, uh, it's it's serious. You got to be able to dominate every day. Put as much work in as possible. Mm. Prepare yourself, man. Um, make sure you, you make sure you. You know, as far as your character, make sure you're on top of everything, your schoolwork, um, all that plays a factor, man. Um, I would say just dominate, you know, where you're at, you know, and uh, put as much work in as possible, as much effort in as possible, because you don't want to regret nothing. Right. Anything. But to get to the lead itself, um, if you're good, they'll find, they'll find you. Mm. 
they'll they will find you, man. Um, they will come, and I know it's a you know it's a few guys coming out this year from HBCUs that's mm -hmm. that's getting heavily recruited right now as far as scouted mm -hmm. NFL. So they'll definitely come find you. Don't matter where you at, but uh, you got to make sure that you're prepared to be on the next level. And um, cause like I said, it's grown men. There there there's livelihoods on the line. Right. I've seen a lot of things, man, this year that I can't talk about, but it's like, it's it's serious. It's right. serious, real life, man. And um, this is people, this is how people feed their family. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they take this thing serious. So you gotta prepare yourself like you're in the league in college. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I would say. While you're in college, in your mindset, you gotta think that you're in the league and, um, and, and, and go about it. You watch a daily routine, daily, every single day like that. I mean, I mean, it's 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 serious though. Mm -hmm. One day I would say it's pretty serious, right? Sure. So now we get to the hot seat questions of the interview. Hot seat questions. Okay, let's do it. What do you spend too much money on? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I would say shoes. I'm gonna just say shoes, man. Mm -hmm. I spend too much money in general. Mm -hmm. I haven't stopped, but I've been. Uh, <laughs> I would say shoes, man. Shoes. I I, I love shoes and I love kids, man. So. Mm -hmm. Advice you would get to your 16 year old self? Uh, I would say um, uh, live life with no regrets, man. You know, um, whatever you do, do 100% effort and be the best at it. You know, uh, whether you the, the trash man, whatever you, whatever you do, be the best at it. You know, put your best foot forward, put your best effort forward because you don't want to live life with no regrets. Mm -hmm. Who's your top five QBs current and all time? Top five QBs current and all time. Mm -hmm. Oh man, uh, that's a tough choice. Woo. <laughs> Woo. No order, no order, no order for this. I'm gonna tell you, no order for this. Um, uh, man, um, Tom Brady, of course, Brady. Um, I'm from VA, so Vic, man, I was a huge Vic fan, man. Vic is dope, bro, to me, for real, for real. Like, Vic really the dope. Um, uh, I'm on the Rams, so I'm gonna throw Matthew Stafford in there. He's just he's out of choir, so I think he's pretty good. He's solid, man. He's pretty mm -hmm. good, man. Um, uh, Dan Marino, uh, um, uh, Steve Young, Steve. Okay. That's a good. That's a good five. I like that five. <laughs> uh oh, not bad. You said current at all time. Do both of them include it, or you want to do five current and five all time? Which one you want to do? Let me let me hear five current and five all time. Let me hear it. Five current uh right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, um, oh uh, man, uh Lamar, Patrick Mahomes, and um and I'm gonna throw Matthew Stafford in there. Matthew Stafford, okay. Yeah, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna do something big this year, man. <laughs> uh <laughs> next question. What is the craziest craziest thing you ever done to impress a girl? Ooh, that's a good one right there. <laughs> Ooh, crazy thing I've done to impress a girl. Oh man. Oh man. Uh, I don't really, uh, I don't really be trying to impress like that, man. I just be myself. Be honest with you, bro. Like they like me, they like me, they don't, they don't. But I ain't gonna lie, we all done some crazy stuff, bro. <laughs> we all. <laughs> we all <laughs> I did. I did. I, oh man. <laughs> um, I asked. I up, oh. I'm trying to think, man. I'm trying to think what I want to tell, bro. I didn't want to say too much, but uh -huh. oh man, I think um I did some wild stuff, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I said, man, I try to be myself, man. I try to just yeah, I'm gonna just stick with that, bro. I try not to be wild, bro. I try not to do nothing crazy, but mm -hmm. I. Definitely uh, I try to be myself. I don't really try to impress like that, like that. But of course, I didn't took girls out and did some nice mm -hmm. things. I tried to, the craziest, the craziest story we had from when somebody, uh, when I asked somebody this question, yeah. they said they had um, some stilts, some like little uh, things they put in the back of their shoe, <laughs> yeah, to make them look taller. <laughs> hey, it's crazy. All right, I got one. I, I tell one then. My mom. I was young. I was a young dude then, man. I was in like high school. My mom uh went out of town. Mm -hmm. And uh she was like, don't take my you know, you know, not my car here. Don't, you know, nice it's a nice car. She's like, mm -hmm. don't 
don't know how to time to be careful, whatever. Don't do nothing. Don't go out with nobody. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I would pick the girl up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went and picked her up, took her out. Man, I got pulled over, man. Uh, I, was, I was doing some wild stuff, bro. Uh, like, like, <laughs> I had to tell you, got his mother started to call mom. To, I'm like, oh, man. But, so, so, you know, I was like, I was like 16, man. Mm-hmm. That's good. I was you learned. Everybody try to flex one time. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. But thank you again for coming on the show. Anything, any closing remarks you want to say to the fans? Oh, man. Um, I appreciate you having me on. Thanks for thanks for taking the time having me on, man. I, this is huge, man. Continue to do this uh, as much as possible. Anything I can do to help, let me know, man. Um, you know, from quarterback to quarterback, H2, day 2 man. I'm here for you. You know, team, this is huge, bro. Appreciate you having me on, man. Thank you. No, appreciate you for coming.